Hi there, my name is Louisa Lyons. I'm a lactation consultant and registered midwife. I think it's first important to have a think about the reasons for combination feeding that you might be thinking about or experiencing. So first of all, thinking about why you need to combination feed or why you want to combination feed. And the two issues are quite different. So I'll try and cover as much as I can, but bearing in mind this is a really short introduction to this topic so if you'd like some more detailed support please get in touch for some one-to-one -one support so if you need to combination feed that might be for a variety of reasons perhaps you've got low milk supply and a small number of women experience low milk supply uh, sometimes due to hormonal reasons and sometimes due to insufficient glandular tissue um, or pre-existing illness so if you need to combination feed for medical reasons, make sure first of all that you've sought help from an international board certified lactation consultant. So somebody with the initials IBCLC after their name, who can give you the most relevant, up to date and evidence based information about this. So if you think you might need to supplement, perhaps because you can't produce enough breast milk for your baby, or perhaps you have other caring responsibilities, if you're caring for older relatives or other children with additional needs, perhaps, or for whatever reason, if you need to physically, mentally or emotionally combination feed, then some of the best tips to do this are to really think about establishing your milk supply first. So if you're planning to combination feed from the start, then the best available evidence suggests that you should try to build your milk supply first and try not to introduce other feeds before three to four weeks after giving birth when your milk supply has had time to establish itself. And the later you can leave this up to six weeks, then probably the better. But again, there's not a lot of information available in terms of clinical research trials on the optimum time. But the collective wisdom is at least three to four weeks after birth. Secondly, thinking about how you're going to give this extra milk and which kind of milk you're going to give. So it may be that you want to give your own expressed breast milk. It may be that you want to or need to um, give donor uh, human milk, which you can access via the Human Milk Foundation. Or it may be that you want to or have to use formula milk. And you can find really good information about formula milk and the different types of formula milk and different brands all on the First Steps Nutrition website. So thinking about how to give the additional milk, first things first, one of the options is to give the milk via a bottle. One of the pluses of this is that it's easily available, so you can buy bottles very easily. And we would recommend that you buy a bottle that is easy for your baby to feed on without any spilling or dribbling of milk or choking or gagging. So often using a longer and thinner teat or a more shaped teat for your baby's mouth is optimal rather than a shorter, stubbier and less flexible teat. So bear that in mind if you're using a bottle. Um, and thinking about how to bottle feed if you're combining that with breastfeeding. So bottle feeding in a way that protects breastfeeding. And there are certain things you can do to protect breastfeeding as much as possible when giving a bottle. One of the risks of giving a bottle is that your baby may develop what's known as a bottle preference. So this is often due to not just the teat shape, but more the flow of the bottle and that being easier and quicker for a baby. So they can often develop a flow preference. So thinking about those things when you're choosing the bottle. Thinking also about uh, paste feeding techniques. So using a paste bottle feed and using methods to make it more like breastfeeding, which if you would like more information on, please do get in touch. Secondly, thinking about uh, the option of other methods of giving additional milk. Um, so one of those options is cup feeding, which is really effective for preterm infants. It's less effective after two to three days for a full term infant. So it may not be a long term method of supplementation for you if you're combined feeding a full term baby past the first few weeks. But it is one method and again I would urge you to speak to an international board certified lactation consultant. Um, another option is one I support a lot of mums with in my practice which is using a supplemental nursing system and the aim of a supplemental nursing system or SNS is that you get the benefits of breastfeeding 
um, without having to use bottles so you don't risk a flow preference or a teat preference and it also is really nice for the parent the mum to feel like they're breastfeeding their baby even if they have a very very low milk supply for physical reasons or even no milk supply for example I've supported mothers to use an SNS when they've had a mastectomy for breast cancer and they just have a nipple but no breast tissue so it can be used in those cases. I've also supported surrogate mothers and adoptive mothers to use an SNS so that they can have a breastfeeding experience even when they're not lactating themselves. So there's lots of options there. The SNS um, uses a very thin tube, so slightly thinner than a nasogastric tube in most cases that might be used for a baby. And that thin tube tapes to your breast using some micropore tape. And um, what the baby does is they take the breast and the tube into their mouth having a deep latch and they breastfeed from you and whether you've got a 5% milk supply or a 95% milk supply they then get all their milk at the breast and the advantage of this method is there's no bottles unless you want there to be for some of the feeds um, and it can feel really empowering for mothers. Just to sort of remind people that I'm sure you're all aware of this but any breast milk is beneficial for mothers and babies. Um, so the benefits of breast milk are a dose response effect. And so any breast milk is useful. Even just 10 to 20 mils a day is better than no breast milk at all. So just bearing in mind the benefits of breast milk and that any breast milk is valuable, whatever you can provide for your baby. And the, maybe the reason that you need to combine feed is that you have to go back to work early, particularly if you're self-employed in the UK. Perhaps you have relatives with health needs and you're caring for relatives or other children. And so breastfeeding exclusively is just not possible for you. Or as I said at the start, perhaps it's a physical reason, um, whether that's anatomical or hormonal, that you can't breastfeed fully. One thing to bear in mind is when you're giving breast milk and if you were giving formula to separate the two. So giving the breast milk first in a bottle or an SNS um, or a cup, whatever you're giving it in so that the breast milk is optimised and not wasted in any way and also so that the antibacterial properties of breast milk are not negatively affected if you were to put formula milk with it. So if you're using formula milk and breast milk, try to give the breast feeds first or the express breast milk first. Wait if you can around 20 minutes to 40 minutes but obviously if you've got a hungry baby this isn't practical so just do what you need to do and then giving the formula milk secondly. So that's a little tip if you're combination feeding. Also to bear in mind um, the rule of sixes with breast milk storage. So freshly expressed breast milk can be kept at room temperature for up to six hours. It can be kept in the back of a fridge for five to eight days. So at least six days in the back of the fridge if the temperature is between naught and five degrees, if you've got a decent fridge, but not keeping it in the door of the fridge. And you can also freeze it for up to six months. So fresh is six hours thereabouts, um, refrigerated in the fridge is six days or thereabout, and freezer is about six months. So I hope that's been useful for you. Um, just a quick introduction to combination feeding. But if you'd like more information for your own individual circumstances, please do get in touch with an international board certified lactation consultant for the best available advice for you and your baby. Mm -hmm.